What's going on guys, John Elder here from Codemy.com and in this video, I'm going to show you how to make transparent windows with Kinter and Python. Alright guys, like I said, in this video, I'm going to show you how to make transparent windows. But before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out Codemy.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership. That's all my courses, videos, and books for one time fee of just $49, which is insanely cheap. Okay, in this video, like I said, we're going to look at making transparent windows and we're going to do all kinds of fun things with them. You see, we here we have a, a second window. When I click on it, boom, it, it changes back to normal. We'll look at that. Uh, we'll create a slider here so we can go darker and lighter, or lighter and darker, I suppose, and uh, all the cool things. So, that's what we're going to look at in this video. So let's head over to our code. I've got a file called alpha.py, a regular Kinter starter code that we always have. I'm using the Sublime Text Editor and the Git Bash Terminal as always. And this is a very special Friday edition. It's not special in any way. It's just Friday. Fridays are always special here. Let's <laughs> see how many mistakes we can make as we usually do on Friday. So in order to do this, it's really, really simple with Kinter. And we just use something called an alpha tag. And to use that, we just call the window that we want to play with. So root, this is our root window, right? And then we just call attributes. And this is a function. And here we pass in this sort of flag looking thing and it's alpha, right? And that's it. Now we just sort of set the level that we want zero being completely transparent and one being completely non transparent regular, right? So these are in the, the format of zero point something. So 0 0.3 would be very transparent. 0 0.1, you could barely see it. 0 0.9 is fairly, you know, regular. And then like 1.0 is completely normal, right? So we can play with this however we want. And we don't even actually have anything in this app right now, but we could still save this and run it. The so Python alpha.py. And when we do, we see this is fairly transparent. So you'll notice that everything in here is transparent. And that's sort of the bad thing about Kinter with this. If you're going to do this, it's all or nothing. So you can't really make just a particular widget transparent. Uh, it's really just the root window itself, which is not great, but you know, it's what we have. So that was 0.3. If we go say, for instance, 0.7, we can run this again. And you can see this one's a little bit more, I guess a little bit less transparent, a little more solid, I guess you would call. And then finally, if we come back here and for instance, just go 1.0, save this and run it. We have just our regular window, right? So like I said, you can't really fiddle with this outside of the window itself. So for instance, we could go my underscore label and that's going to be a label. I want to put it in root. We want the text to say, hello world. And we want the font to equal, let's say Helvetica and like size 20. We'll make it really big. And then we can my underscore label dot pack, give it a pad Y of 20 to push it down the screen a little bit. Now you notice if we wanted to try and go my underscore label dot attributes. And then for instance, if we copied all of this and popped it in here and tried to make this transparent, we save this and run it. We're just going to get an error because there is no attributes function for the label widget, right? So that really only kind of works for the root window for windows itself. Now you can, you can do it for pop-up windows. If you do other windows, if you're opening other windows, like top level windows, and we'll look at that in a second. But, uh, like I said, it's really just all or nothing with this thing. So, okay. That's kind of interesting. So now let's play around with this. Let's, let's add a button. Well, let's add a uh, slider first to play with this. Uh, it's Friday. Let's have some fun. Let's come up here and import our TTK slider thing. So let's go import tkinter.ttk as TTK. We've done this lots of times in the past. Let's create a slider. And I'm going to call this my underscore slider. And this is going to be a TTK.scale widget. And we want to put it in root. And we want it from underscore equals. So let's go 0 
comma two equals, and let's go 1.0. So we want this to be able to slide from as transparent as possible to as solid as possible, right? And right off the bat, let's give this a value equals uh, 0 0.7. And I'm gonna come up here and give our app a 0 0.7 as well. So they both start on the same number. And we wanna give this an orient equal horizontal. And let's give this a command of slide. So let's go my underscore slider dot pack, give this a pad Y of 20 to push it down the screen a little bit. So now let's create this slide function real quick. So let's go create slide function and let's define it. We need to pass something into it because every time you move the slider, it's gonna pass that into the slide function. And then we could just come up here and grab this guy and inside of here paste it. But instead of explicitly putting this thing in here, let's instead call my underscore slider dot get, and that's a function. And that's cool. If we wanna be really slick about this, let's create a label. And let's call this uh, slide underscore label. And that's gonna be a label. I wanna put it in root, I want the text to equal nothing. And let's go slide underscore label dot pack and give this a pad Y of like 10 just to push it down a little bit below the slider. And then we could come up here and slide underscore label dot config and set the text equal to my underscore slider dot get whatever that is. So we could print out onto the screen exactly what that number is. And I just playing around here. So let's save this and run it, see what we got here. So we're starting at 0.7 as we grab this and slide it. You can see, boom, now we're at one. It's completely solid. We can go all the way down. And now we're at 0.1. It's interesting. And you can see here's the actual number. Now this is kind of unruly. We want, might want to change this to just two decimal places. It's Friday, we're playing around, we might as well. <laughs> so we could do that by, in our label here, wrapping all of this in a string function. Uh, there we go. There we go. And then inside of here, rounding it so we can use the round function. There we go. And then we want say two decimal places. Right now, let's see right here, two decimal places, all of these brackets matching up. So inside of here, we want to round this thing to two decimal places. Yes, and then one, two, three, one, two, three. yeah, that looks good. So, all right, go ahead and save this and run it. Let's see if that's any better. So, all right, now we're just at two decimal places. A little easier to read here, we're at 0 0.61, 0 0.51, all the way down. Okay, so that's fun, <laughs> right? Now, let's create a button here that launches another window that's completely transparent until we click on it. Now, that might actually be useful. If you have other windows you want to be floating around, but you don't want them to be sort of, in your face, we can make them transparent until they're clicked on and then they become solid or whatever. So let's do that real quick, that'd be fun. So let's come down here and let's create new window button. And let's call this new window. And it's gonna be a button. We wanna put it in root, we want the text to equal new window. And we want the command to equal, let's call this new window two, just for fun. All right, so let's go new underscore window dot pack. Give this a pad Y of like 20 to push it down the screen. And now let's uh, open new window. And so we can define new window. So let's create, um, let's just call this new, and it's gonna be a top level widget. And we could go new dot attributes. And let's come up here and let's copy this whole. No, let's see, what do we want? We want this, right? Just copy this whole thing. So dot attributes, and let's make this, I don't know, 0.5 or whatever. All right, so if we save this and run it, we have our original thing, we can pop this up and a new window appears. Okay, that's cool, but when we click on it, nothing actually happens. We wanna make it solid when we click on it. So let's do that real quick. 
So we need to bind something here. So let's go new dot bind. And what we want to do is pass in the left mouse button click. So if the if the left mouse button clicks anywhere on the window, we want to do something for the and we know the binding for the left mouse button is button dash one, we've done this in other videos. And then when that happens, what do we want to do? Let's call this uh, make underscore solid. Okay, so we want to run the make solid function. So let's say make second window solid when clicked. So let's define our make solid function. And here we just want to change this to, I guess, 1.0, right? We want to make it solid. But in order to access new, we need to make new global. So in here, let's go global new. Okay, so that should work. Let's go ahead and save this and give it a run. So new window, we can click that, bring it over. So now it's transparent when we click on it. Uh oh, got an error. Ah, anytime we bind, remember, we're passing an event. So this function that gets called needs to be watching for an event. So we need to put an E in there. All right. It's Friday. See, we made a mistake. Always happens on Friday. All right. So let's run this guy again. Here we go. Click new window. It appears I can click anywhere in here. Boom. It makes it solid again. A silly app. I don't know why you would want to do that, but it's kind of interesting. And you might actually use this if you have right off the bat with your if your app opens and you have several other sort of transparent windows that you want to be be out of focus. You can then sort of do this whole thing to where if you click on one, then it becomes in focus or whatever. So I don't know, just a fun thing to do. And this guy, I don't know what the point of this slider is, but it, it could show us different transparencies at different levels, right? So that's pretty much how you can make an app transparent. Granted, I understand this is not great because it's all or nothing. You know, you can't make the background transparent, but then like have the button solid or whatever, which is probably what you want to do if you want this sort of, uh, you know, this look or feel in your app. Why well, it is hard to even grab this thing. There we go. Right. Ah. But play around with this. Maybe you can find some use for it. It's pretty easy to do. And that's all there is to it. So that's all for this video. If you'd like to be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube one to get $30 off membership. So pay just $49 to access all my courses, over 47 courses, hundreds of videos and the PDFs of all my best selling coding books. Join over 100,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codemy.com and I'll see you in the next video.